Christoph, we, we can see on a brain the different structures, the cerebral hemispheres, the cerebellum, the, the, the brain stem, uh, and anatomists know this very well. As a neurophysiologist, how do you relate function, things that they do, to structure? So first of all, one big difference to computers, which we know very well because we build them, is that here, here you have different structures that are involved in different functions. So if you look at the CPU, you look at all the transistors, they pretty well all do this, you know, they look homogeneous pretty much throughout the central processing unit, the transistors are the same. And you, uh, you do your spreadsheet, you do your taxes, you uh, play a DVD, you do some, complica uh, some complicated mathematical modeling like we do here, all on the exactly the same CPU. In that case, there's no simple structure function relationship. If you look at the brain, as you point out, you look at the visual brain, or you look at the auditory brain, or you look at the, ol the, the, the olfactory brain, uh, they all seem to have specialization of different types of neurons. There are some commonalities, of course, but then the different neurons that are involved in different sort of computations. And many of these features, we still have no idea. So, for example, in the, in the central part of the brain, there's a, there's a structure called the endothalamus. And, um, it re for example, there's a visual thalamus and there's a um, somatosensory thalamus. The visual thalamus receives input from the eye and then has, sends, a fiber, sends a bunch of cables from the, from the visual thalamus onto the visual cortex at the back of your head. It's like a relay station. Exactly. Except, it would be a relay station, except there's this strange finding that there are roughly 10 times more fibers that go back from visual cortex to the LGN that's in the periphery than coming up. So this is a little bit ten like ten times. Ten times, yeah. So this is a little bit like you take a camera and you have a coax cable going from your camera into your computer, and then you have a much thicker cable that goes from your computer back into the camera. So, so what is it doing? Well, probably not just a mere relay, because probably, well, for instance, maybe the role of expectation. We know from psychology that when you expect things to happen you're more likely to see what you expect than the unexpected. When, I, when something suddenly happens, there are all sorts of illusions to show when you didn't expect something, you're less likely to, to notice this. Well, maybe Cortex sends down and says, okay, the next one, 10 seconds, I expect this thing to happen, and you adjust some sort of gains and filters appropriately in order to, 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 to help you see. So, so there are many aspects of the architecture that, that, that strike us as, well, there's got to be something really important here, but we don't really know yet what it is used for. So theoretically that if, if we didn't have the, the feedback from the higher level down to the lower level, somehow the information would be, um, would be too raw. It, it, it wouldn't be properly selected or so focused on or developed. Yes, so perception is an active it's an active it's process. A, it's an active process. It's not just that sort of I sit there and passively I let this information flow onto me and it automatically reconstructs itself. It's a very much active process. All of our perception constantly involves making assumption about the environment. And we don't know, this is all sort of unconscious. It's not co conscious, it's all unconscious. We do this all the time. We make assumption what's out there and by and large it works very well. Otherwise we would still be on the trees. Otherwise we would never have evolved out of the, out of, out of the seed.